Hello, everyone. My name is Han Ren, and I'm an assistant professor at Miami University. And today, we're going to talk about our effort in mapping the potential of zero charge using scanning electrochemical cell microscopy, or SECCM. So we are the electrochemistry group at Miami University, and Miami University is actually located in Oxford, Ohio. It's not in Florida, and it's just uh, like Midwest, and currently it's in fall here. You can see all the uh, trees. Uh, it's a very beautiful uh, campus. And what we specialized uh, is uh, we use uh, nanoelectrochemical tools, including uh, scanning electrochemical cell microscopy, to study uh, the single entity electrochemistry or the processes at the electrical surface. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the potential of zero charge and also about electrical double layer. And uh, as an electrochemist, uh, electrical double layer is fundamentally important because uh, it's uh, ubiquitous at all the uh, electrode surface. And uh, on the left here is a GUI Chapman SIR model. Let me bring out the laser pointer. So uh, when you, the metal is, has a negative charge on the surface, then it can attract uh, the ions of the opposite sign. So it can attract cations to the surface. And this is the, uh, the basics for this electrical double layer. And uh, this is uh, very important in electrochemistry. And the charge, the exact charge on the uh, metal surface depends on two things. One is the uh, electrical potential we applied. The second is what's the PZC value of that uh, metal. So if the uh, potential is more negative than the PZC or potential of zero charge, then the metal is going to be negatively charged and then it will attract cations and uh, vice versa. If the metal is uh, is going to be positively charged if our uh, electrical potential is more positive than the uh, PZC. So therefore, you can see that uh, electrical double layer is uh, very important in electrochemistry, uh, and the PZC is critical in uh, the electrical double layer because it determines what the charge is going to be uh, on the metal surface and also uh, inside the electrical double layer. All right. So uh, the PZC uh, has been measured by different methods. One of the methods is called the capacitive uh, capacitance or specific uh, capacitance curves. And uh, pioneered by Hamling, uh, what uh, they found is that the capacitance uh, of the single crystal silver, this uh, differential capacitance curves actually depends on the crystal orientation of the silver. As, and uh, the minimum on this capacitance curve, for example, right here, correspond to the potential of zero charge. So therefore, uh, you can see from the, the set of curves is that depending on the uh, crystal orientations, the potential of zero charge uh, can actually vary depending on the crystal orientation. And this variation can be actually quite large. And in this example of silver, uh, we have uh, about 0.4 volts of a variation of, of the PZC just because of the different crystal orientations. And those are single crystal uh, measurements. However, uh, we often use many polycrystalline materials uh, in electrochemistry and also in electrocatalysis. Uh, and then the question is, uh, because the polycrystal electrodes have many grains on them, and the, those grains can have very different crystal orientation. And so therefore, it is believed that all those grains will have different local PZC values depending on the uh, local crystal orientation. And when I uh, look at this, uh, what we wanted to do here is we want to see if we can actually measure this local potential of zero charge on the polycrystalline metals to see if they can actually correlate back to the single crystal measurement. And uh, further, we wanted to know that whether this potential of zero charge, this local PZC, correlates with the electrocatalytic activities. 
So the tool we're going to use is called Scanning Electrochemical Cell Microscopy. And this is pioneered by Pat Unwin from University of Warwick. And also uh, during that time, Kim uh, McKelvey and Martin Edwards were PhD students in the group. They uh, were uh, developing this uh, new tools to uh, investigate local electrochemistry. So the principle is that you will use uh, a nano pipette and uh, you'll fill the pipette, which will then form a droplet of meniscus at the tip of the nano pipette. And you will just use this uh, meniscus as the electrochemical cell so that all your electrochemistry is confined in this small uh, droplet. And this is how uh, you can do this electrochemistry. The advantage, one advantage I see is that these probes are very easy to make. You can use a laser puller, and within 10 seconds, you can actually uh, get a pair of these probes. And uh, you can change the parameters of the laser heatings to uh, control the size and geometry of this pipette. So th those probes are very easy to make. So uh, we like to use them to study the local electrochemistry. And uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to measure the potential of zero charge. How we measure that is we uh, use this SCCCM and repeatedly approaching the probe to the same location on the surface. As you can see uh, from this animation here is uh, when you approach this uh, pipette to the uh, electro surface uh, and you, when you apply a certain voltage, what you expect is you can see uh, a spike in your current. And before that, uh, the current is essentially zero because uh, no contact is formed between the, uh, the droplet and the substrate electrode. And uh, it's essentially, it's an uh, open circuit, so there's no zero current. However, when, once this uh, droplet is in contact with the electrode surface, then the circuit is complete. Now you can have electrochemistry occurring uh, at this electrode droplet interface. And this spike actually corresponds to the charging current. So it's the charging of this electrical double layer. And what we can do next is we can retract the pipette and then approach to the surface again and at a different uh, electrode potential. And then we'll see a different spike. And uh, we can use the polarity of the spike to actually define the potential of zero charge. Because if you're applying a potential that is more negative than the PCC, then you expect to see a negative uh, spike. And if you're, uh, uh, the applied potential is more positive than PCC, then you expect to see a positive spike. And by doing this repetitively at different voltages uh, at the same locations, and uh, what we can get is we can get this IT curves with different uh, charging current spike. And we can integrate the peak, uh, the first 10, uh, five milliseconds, and we can obtain the charge. If we apply the charge versus the potential and we can obtain uh, at what potential, we actually got zero charge. And that is by definition, the potential of zero charge. So that's how we can do the measurement of the local potential of zero charge at one place. And we can then continue to hop this uh, electrode to a second place and to continue uh, this uh, scanning. And on the left here is shown the footprint of when we do this hopping scanning on a polycrystalline platinum. You can see all the grains on it and you can uh, see there's some footprint ac actually left uh, during this SECCM experiment. And that's from the uh, pipette approaching and forming this droplet. So we can use that to co-localize our uh, measurement so that we know where each measurement is actually performed uh, locally. So we can do the same thing. We can uh, uh, measure this PZC at different points. We can obtain uh, uh, the map of the PZC. And you, if we do a light scan on this two line here, you'll see that uh, and this, again, this uh, dash line here just show different grains that correspond to the SEM image. And you will see that uh, when crossing different grains, you do sometimes see there's a difference uh, between the PZC values. And we can actually correlate 
and do the co-localized uh, mapping of the uh, EBSD, electron uh, backscattering uh, diffraction. And uh, we can uh, quantify the crystal orientations of different grains. And we can then uh, use the uh, uh, different grains to measure the PZCs and correlate them to the uh, crystal orientations. And you will see that uh, on average, if the grain is closer to 111, then uh, the, uh, the PZC value is going to be larger. And if the grain is closer to 100 or 110, then uh, the PZC value of the platinum is going to be more uh, negative. And this is consistent with the uh, measurement on the uh, single crystal electrode. And we can do uh, an, a further step is we can also measure the um, electrocatalytic activity and correlate that to a PZC uh, locally. So we first uh, measure this. Uh, this is another a polycrystalline a platinum. You can see they have contains four major grains, and uh, we map the PZC values as we just uh, mentioned. And what we can do is we can uh, simultaneously at the same location actually measure the voltammograms. And this uh, voltammograms, uh, this is correspond to the hydrogen evolution reaction. Then we can extract the kinetics of electron transfer from this uh, uh, vot voltammograms. And here is a map of the current uh, during the voltammograms at a certain uh, voltage. And you can see there is a certain spot or certain grains on this grain number four. It has a much higher activity compared to the other grains, which can also be seen from this uh, voltammograms where uh, the peaks start to take off much earlier than uh, the others. And we can uh, convert those voltammograms locally and extract the TAFL slope. And here is a map of the TAFL slope at different grains. And clearly, at different grains, there are, diff there are different activities in the uh, hydrogen evolution reactions. And the last uh, is we can correlate this to the PZC values on the y axis here is the TAFL slope. And on the x axis here is the PZC values. And again, we can see that. Uh, the grains, different grains, the two major grains have two uh, distributions of the TAFL slope as well as the distribution in the PZC. And there is a negative correlation uh, between the TAFL slope and the PZC values. And again, all these individual dots just represent one measurement locally defined by the SECCM. So uh, conclusion here is that we demonstrate the direct mapping of the local PZC uh, using repetitive uh, approaching of SECCM. And we can uh, measure the local PZC, which co uh, correlate uh, well with the local crystal orientations. And lastly, uh, the co-localized measurements of the electrocatalytic activities also tell us that there is a negative correlation between the PZC and the TAFL slope for the hydrogen evolution reaction on platinum. So with that, I'd like to uh, thank uh, my groups who actually did this work. Uh, it's mostly done by Yufei Wang, who is a graduate student in my lab, and also Emma Gordon, who helps all the uh, electron micrographs, and also the EBSD. And the funding, uh, we're currently supported by uh, the ACSPR app and also DARPA. So uh, with that, I'd like to stop here and I'll be happy to answer uh, questions if you have any.